So I love the beginning of a new year, especially as a reader, because it allows me to kind of take a look at my last reading year and consider the books that I would like to read in the upcoming year. So I have compiled a list of books that I would like to read this year. There are about 15 books and I'll be going over them with you today. And I just have to put a little disclaimer that I am a notorious mood reader, which means I could read all of the books on this list this year. Some of them, or maybe none of them, but I definitely <laughs> would love to get to these at some point this year. I'll begin with an author that I read in the end of 2022 into 2023 and absolutely loved, Mona Awad, and I would love to read Rouge. This novel is about a girl, her mother passes away, and it's all about beauty expectations, societal norms, it says, for as long as she can remember, Belle has been insidiously obsessed with skin and skincare videos. When her estranged mother, Noelle, mysteriously dies, Belle finds herself back in Southern California, dealing with her mother's considerable debts and grappling with lingering questions about her death. So it says, this is Snow White meets eyes wide shut in the surreal descent into the dark side of beauty, envy, grief, and the complicated love between mothers and daughters. Um, the cover is stunning, and I loved All's Well by Mona Awad. I thought it was a very interesting look, once again, at Feminine Rage. So I'm interested to see how she tackles this. And I've heard great things about this book. I'm excited to read it, and it is one of my highly anticipated reads for the year. An author that has been on my TBR all of 2023, who I did not get to, um, ashamedly did not get to is Clarice Lispector and I have Agua Viva. This is basically ruminations on capturing the present. It says her direct confessional and unfiltered meditations on everything from life and time to perfume and sleep are strange and hypnotic in their emotional power and have been a huge influence on many artists and writers. So as someone who is or identifies as a writer, I have been meaning to get to Clarice Lispector from everyone that I hear who has read her, loves her work, and is forever changed by it. And I feel like maybe that's why I've been putting it off because I have such high expectations and I don't want to be disappointed. But how could I be disappointed with Lispector? She's a fae for a reason. I would also like to read more from Lispector in general, so if you have a favorite Lispector that you've read and you would think that I would also like to read and check out, please let me know in the comments below. But yes, I need more from Lispector this year. I have my bookmark in it, which means it's happening. Staying on the theme of beauty and capturing reflections, I would love to read On Beauty by Zadie Smith. Zadie Smith is a writer who I actually love, but I have not read much of, which doesn't make total sense. I've read one very brief essay collection called Intimations, which I absolutely loved, and it kind of serves as a snapshot of what the beginnings of the COVID-19 pandemic was in 2020. Um, just very stunning, beautiful observations of the passage of time and this life. But I would love to read On Beauty. Once again, this follows a family just outside of Boston in a small college town of Wellington. They're liberated by education, complicated by race, and hobbled by self-delusion, which we love. I'm claiming 2024 as the year of being delusional because you need to maintain a level of delusion in order to get where you want to get to in life. So in my mind, I'm a best-selling author already, you know, so that's how I'm living. So I, I can relate to this family. They're about to stray onto the battleground that divides personal beliefs from political conviction. On Beauty is Zadie Smith's brilliant, hilarious send-up of the culture wars that define our age. Okay, a poet who passed away in 2023, who I have encountered since they've passed with people sharing the work. And from what I've read, some lines have been permanently stamped into my brain. But this monstrous, <laughs> gigantic collection is of the late great Louise Gluck, poems from 1962 to 2012. I have been eyeing this and in a, few, in a video 
before on my channel I talked about how I wanted to read this collection after I finished reading Devotions by Mary Oliver. I've seen this. The cover draws me in instantly because I too am a lover of outer space and all things celestial so I'm very excited to begin reading this in 2024. I don't think I'm going to finish it. How I like to approach these selected works um, is by essentially just piecing through it, dipping in and out, enjoying it. I think that poetry is something that should be enjoyed and I don't really like to I don't really like to um, put restrictions or timelines or deadlines on when I need to finish reading a poetry collection. So yeah, I'm excited to read this collection. Um, it has works from Firstborn, The House on Marshland, Descending Figure, The Triumph of Achilles, The Wild Iris, which I've seen and I know is one of this poet's great works, Vita Nova, The Seven Ages, Averno, which I've also seen, and A Village Life. So it has selected poems from there. I love reading these big collections from poets because it just feels like a culmination of their greatest works. And I feel like I'm on a tour <laughs> of their portfolio and their artistic life. So I cannot wait, I cannot wait to read this this year. I do have a few classics that are on my TBR. Um, I actually need to grab the other two because I forgot, but the first one being Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I have never read Frankenstein and I really want to dabble more into classics this year. That is just an overall goal that I have. I feel as though I've always shied away from classics because for number one, I feel very intimidated by them for some reason. I just feel like they require a lot of energy and big brainness that I don't know what I have. <laughs> and number two, I feel as though I would love to talk about them in an academic setting and analyze them in an academic setting just to get a little more out of them. But yes, I would love to read Frankenstein. Very classic gothic horror. We know Frankenstein. I'm going to grab the other two classics I would like to read this year. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, so I have them here. The first one is Virginia Woolf, A Room of One's Own. I have been talking about this forever on my channel. have not yet read it, which, uh, this is Virginia Woolf's imagining that Shakespeare had a sister, a sister equal to him in talent, equal in genius, but whose legacy is radically different. So this imaginary woman never writes a word and dies by her own hand, her genius unexpressed only she had found the means to create argues wolf she would have reached the same heights as her immortal sibling so i love this once again this feels like an iconic piece of feminist literature that i need to read and then i have been making my way through pride and prejudice by jane austen um i made it to page 27 and then i stopped reading <laughs> um i was actually really really loving this I think it's funny um, it is like an iconic romance romantic comedy in a sense kind of a grumpy man and a girl who is very unimpressed by him but of course they fall in love so I'm excited to continue reading this in 2024 okay I'll kind of go into a new release or recent releases and um, some contemporary literary fiction that I would like to get into. Um, the first one being A Man Is No Woman. This is by Atof Rum and it follows a Palestinian American girl who is living in Brooklyn and her relative who was once in Palestine and then moves to America because she gets married and I believe this has to do with once again like generational expectations um, for culture and heritage 
the young girl who is Palestinian American who grows up in Brooklyn her family wants her to be married and kind of follow along those traditions however she wants to go to college and she wants to pursue her education so I would love to get into this this year once again I've been seeing this on everyone's 2023 list if they've read it and I'm excited to take a dive into this on the back it says a dauntless exploration of the pathology of silence both a love letter to storytelling and a careful object object lesson in its power a book that came out in 2023 is day by michael cunningham this was kindly sent to me by random house and this follows the same day over three years it's april 5th 2019 april 5th 2020 and then april 5th 2021 and it's a searing exquisitely crafted exploration of love and loss the struggles and limitations of family life and how we all must learn to live together and apart and this follows a cozy brownstone in brooklyn um dan and isabel husband and wife are slowly drifting apart and both it seems are a little bit in love with isabel's younger brother robbie so it follows 2019 before the pandemic of course 2020 in the throes of the pandemic and then 2021 as things slowly begin to return to normal and how this family is impacted by this i guess i'm reading a lot of stories about brooklyn which i don't mind because once again, I'm delusional. I love where I live now. I love the city I live in now, very close to New York City, but I too one day see myself owning a brownstone in Brooklyn. So <laughs> I'm putting myself in that headspace with reading <laughs> these two books. And I heard this one makes you sob and it's life changing. And honestly, I've been missing a book that will make me cry as an Aquarius. I don't cry a lot. So if a book does that to me, I know it's special. And this was also blurbed by Ocean Vong, who is someone I live for, breathe for in the literary space and in the poet poetic space. So I'm excited to get to this. Um, okay, we're nearing the end of the list. This is a book that is not out yet from Mariner. This was sent to me, and this is Annie Bot. She's human in every way that matters. Annie Bot was created to be the perfect girlfriend for her human owner, Doug. De um, designed to satisfy his emotional and physical needs, she has dinner ready for him every night, wears the pert outfits he orders for her, and adjusts her moods to suit his. Doug says he loves that Annie's artificial intelligence makes her seem more like a real woman, so Annie explores human traits such as curiosity, secrecy, and longing. But becoming more human also means becoming less perfect. And as Annie's relationship with Doug grows more intricate and difficult, she starts to wonder. Does Doug really desire what he says he wants? And in such an impossible paradox, what does Annie owe herself? So I think this will be an interesting exploration through the eyes of an AI, of what it means to be human. And as we grow increasingly more dependent and incorporating AI into our daily lives with things like ChatGPT, etc., I think that this is a very interesting book from my friends who also received this they said they love it and they think it might be the book of 2024 it's not out yet but it comes out in march of this year so shout out to mariner they sent this to me and i thought i'd share it with you guys because it is in it is pretty read for me um another book that i would like to get to is let us descend by jessamine ward this is basically uh, a Dante Inferno retelling through the lens of an African-American um, person what that experience is like I've heard that this was a beautiful novel to read as well Jasmine Ward is another author that I need to read more of whose works impact so many lives and tell such amazing stories so I'm excited for this. This came out um, towards the end of last year and I'm excited. Last but not least, two books that I would like to read. The first one being The Friend by Sigrid Nunez. I've heard once again amazing things and this book follows a woman who takes on the dog of her recently um, deceased friend and mentor I think 
and it's an exploration of grief what it means to be human and a caretaker and I've heard amazing things about it and lastly the book I would like to read is everyone in this room will someday be dead this is by Emily Austin and what drew me to this book number one I've seen so many people talk about it since it came out it's on a lot of people's favorites I've heard that this is essentially about Gilda, a 20-something lesbian who cannot stop ruminating about death. She's desperate for relief from her panicky mind and alienated from her repressive family. She responds to a flyer for free therapy at a local Catholic church and finds herself greeted by Father Jeff, who assumes she's there for a job interview. Too embarrassed to correct him, Gilda is abruptly hired to replace the recently deceased receptionist Grace. So I feel like this is kind of an interesting take. Oh, it's snowing. <laughs> on um once again existentialism religion what role religion plays in our lives and i am one who loves a good religious allegory or analogy in literature i just eat it up one of my favorite poetry collections this year was satan says by sharon olds which was littered to the brim with religious allegory so it's just something that i appreciate and love and i'm excited to read this i've heard it's funny it's deep but lighthearted and I just think that it will be a book I will love and I'm kind of anticipating reading interesting facts about space by Emily Austin as well which comes out I believe this month at the end of January so I'll be having my eye out for that one too but yes those are all of the novels I would like to read this year all of the things I would like to read this year let me know what you're interested in reading in 2024 let me know if you've read any of these books and what you think of them please don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next video bye